Hello and welcome to this project's final presentation. My name is Michael Chablet and I'm going to present my work on dynamic light projection through fog. Walls are the physical and metaphorical foundations of our civilization. We work, we sleep, we live behind walls. We consider walls often unconsciously, as support, stability and protection. There are, of course, negative aspects to walls. They can be restrictive, confining or they can even collapse. In any case, we consider walls as solid and static elements. But what would happen if walls became dynamic? The aim of this project is to experiment with space perception, walls and how people act in their presence. Using technological advancements such as those offered by computer science, how can we literally as well as metaphorically transform and reconstruct walls? By having dynamic walls that react to user presence, we want to reflect on the various aspects of interaction with architectural structures. Of course, there have been several instances of so-called interactive wall, such as simple 2D projections or touch interfaces. Here, we put the emphasis on the plural of the word wall, interactive walls. We want to experiment with walls in a general way, with the concept and the representation of walls. We want to do so in the physical sense, we want to explore the three-dimensional space. Projecting light through fog is one interesting way to play with the concept of barriers and frontiers. In a room, using a projector attached to the ceiling, a camera also attached to the ceiling, speakers, a fog machine, and of course, a computer. We want to reflect on human wall interaction, on its meanings and implications. We try to do so by designing three main activities or experiments, each exploring different aspects of wall interaction. The taming of a dynamic Bezier curve, which is a collaborative task. A playful maze escape an individual task, and a light-hearted fight based on halos of light, a confrontative task. We will go through each of those in a moment. As we will also see, in the end, the main focus was put on developing the first experiment. Before going through the project history, let's take a sneak peek at the final version of the dynamic Bezier curve, which I call the Bezier Wall. It's actually quite hard to film fog. The effect looks much more vivid when you look at it in real life than on film. Let's now go through the project history. This project started as a collaborative work between Carlos Sanchez Witt and I. At the end of the first week of the semester, we had had a brainstorming session on how to experiment with three-dimensional space perception. We produced 10 interesting ideas, which you can see here, and the light through fog idea was among these. I decided to concentrate on this, whereas Carlos focused on the dynamic windows idea. The hardware set up, so the projector, the camera, both attached to the ceiling and pointed to the ground, and the use of a fog machine was already defined. During the first few weeks, I set up the programming environment, which consisted and still consists of Processing, OpenCV, JavaCV Pro, and GS Video. I already had the idea of an interactive dynamic Bezier curve in mind. As I did not have any knowledge in processing nor in OpenCV, 
I began playing with it and built a flowing Bezier curve generator shown here. The generated curve is in fact composed of one or more cubic Bezier curves attached together. We can increase or decrease the number of position points, which are the endpoints of each Bezier curve, that compose the curve. In order to give a flowing effect to the curve, I made each position point and control point move around an ellipse. The result was simple but satisfactory. In the meantime, I also started to experiment with OpenCV through processing, as I wanted to do blob detection in order to detect people that came and went below the camera. The blob detection method is quite simple. We capture and store a reference frame from the camera, for example when there's nothing or nobody in front of it. Then we compute the difference between each subsequent captured frame and the reference frame. And finally we do some binary thresholding and we feed this binary image to OpenCV which gives us the blobs. Along the Bezier curve idea, I wanted to create two more experiments that would highlight other characteristics of war. From this started the maze and the halo fight ideas. Here's a slide from the mid-semester presentation, which was the first presentation, summarizing the three basic ideas I came up with. First, there's the Bezier wall idea. As people would move around, the Bezier wall would flow, move more and more, and try to avoid them. This was meant to be a collaborative task, as I wanted to have people move around. And also, it was meant to represent the uncontrollability of forms. Then there's the maze idea. People would have to escape a maze of fog. This was more of an individual task, and was meant to represent the confining aspect of forms. The third task was more of a confrontative task. Each person would be followed by a halo of light with a particular color and shape and they could throw projectiles of light to each other. Getting hit would decrease their own halo size. This was designed for highlighting the protection characteristic of walls. I developed a first version of the BSG wall right on time for this mid-semester presentation. Here's the demonstration sequence of the presentation without fog. I couldn't test that yet. As you can see, I am first presenting the blob detection steps. Then we can see how the curve interaction works. It is quite simple but smooth. I really wanted movements to be smooth to go with the flowing or pulsating feeling of the curve. Basically, each position point has a motion center, the center of the ellipse, which I move in the direction of the approaching blob until a particular threshold. By that time, I also had started working on the maze, but I couldn't show anything yet. Between this first presentation and the second one, which happened in early December, I mainly worked on the maze idea and began programming the Halo Fight concept. I wanted to refine the interactivity of the Bezier curve, but somehow, ended up a bit stuck as I wasn't satisfied by what I repeatedly tried to improve. I really wanted to keep the smoothness feeling and it was not easy. I couldn't test my project in a real setting, that is, in a room filled with fog with a projector and a camera, until the second presentation. I had a black room on the third floor of manufacture that I could fill with fog. This allowed me to test the various visuals of my project. It was a success, but not easy to capture on film, as you can see right now. I did not have time to set up a camera on the ceiling, so this made me forget a potential problem that would arise. The fog hiding the blobs. As advised by Professor Hong, I then focused on developing the Bezier wall for the rest of the semester, as the other two experiments presented much less dynamic components that could be expanded. I am now going to quickly present the last versions of these two. These will be simulation sequences where blobs or characters are controlled by mouse and keyboard. 
In this activity, a maze is generated randomly. We first display two green panels that represent two entrances. Once the player went in through one of those, he has to get out by going through the other one. If he touches a wall, he loses. Recall that the initial goal of this experiment was to highlight the confining aspect of walls, trying to get out of an enclosing space, finding an exit. We project only the walls that are near the player. This was originally a trick to reduce the tilted appearance of the maze when projected through the fog, but I think that it reinforces the confining characteristic. You cannot see what's behind a wall. In this activity, two or more people fight by throwing light blobs, or light pillows as it would be projected through fog. They are represented by halos which grow in size as they hit their target. But these halos also shrink as soon as they shoot their projectile. So participants have to take risks and hope that they will hit other players. This activity was meant to highlight the protection aspect of walls. As long as their halo, their enclosing space is big enough, players are protected. Need for a wall as protection denotes need for defense, which implies the existence of a threat. In our case, the threat is the other player's projectiles. Let's take a look at the final version of the busy wall. We'll first look at a simulation sequence and explain how it works. Then we'll look at actual footage without fog and then with fog. As you can see, and here, the interactivity has evolved. I have added sound effects through the ESS R2 library for processing, and the reaction to approaching blobs is a bit more complex, more distributed on the curve. First of all, the sounds. I decided to add the sounds following the suggestions from Professor Hong about one of the other two experiments. I thought that this new dimension could add another kind of unusual, flowing tangibility to the wall. The wall has a dedicated pink noise sound. As people go near it, the volume increases. In parallel, each person is assigned a sine wave, for which the volume independently increases as this person approaches the curve. The pink noise reminds us of the sound of a river, which adds liveliness to the uncontrollability characteristic we wanted to highlight. Each sine wave represents each personal incoming confrontation with the wall, which never happens since this wall awaits people up until the very last second. Then, the new curve reaction. We can easily notice that now people actually push the curve forward instead of simply make its position points move around. The curve displacement is still smooth. In addition to that, we also increase the speed at which points move around their motion ellipses as people approach. In both cases, we compute an approximate of the curve using the nearest points and the final values are weighted depending on the distances to these nearest points. Let's now look at some footage without fog. As we see, everything is working quite well.
let's now look at some footage with fog. As we see, it doesn't really work. So why doesn't it work? There are a few reasons to that. First of all, the projector and the camera are not high enough. Because of this, the projected and the captured area is quite small. When doing blob detection, we actually check for non-human blobs using blob proportions. When the camera is close to the people below, these computations are harder to check. The shadows that people project on the ground, or even those on their clothes, are much more visible and thus disturb blob detection. But there's also another major reason, the fog itself. I've briefly talked about this before, but fog gets in the way between the camera and people on the ground. At the end of the semester I was absolutely focused on developing the busy hole and I couldn't look into that. This problem could be solved using maybe an infrared camera as they supposedly see through fog. Let's wrap up this report. Is it possible to reflect on what is a wall using light and fog? Yes it is, but the applications or experiments you design with these must be meaningful. In particular, they should make good use of the technology itself of the dynamic aspect of light and the volatile probability of fog. We saw for example that among our three experiments, the Bezier wall was the most suitable for it. The maze was a too static structure and the halos needed refinement. Additionally, when one designs such experiments, especially when using ephemeral and erratic elements such as light and fog, one should keep in mind all the external parameters to its application. For example, in what kind of room will it be used or presented? What will be the available hardware? And more importantly, what could go wrong? So it is possible to reflect and emphasize certain characteristics using light and fog. But could light and fog actually work together in a real, not experimental, setting? Would it be possible? Would we accept it? To have walls of smoke, ephemeral barriers, temporary light barricades? In any case, this question won't be answered here.